The Ascombs have accepted my invitation. That means half the county will be there. Where, sir? At the ball branch. Oh, the old house will come alive again, and the haggers will take their rightful place in society. So make sure you delouse the dance. <laughs> and do yourself as well. You want our guests scratching themselves all through the quadrille. Yes, sir. I can't wait to tell Master Roderick. He'll be so excited. Excited? To tell the truth, he doesn't seem very interested these days. Not interested. No. Arabella Ascombe is the richest filly in a three days ride. Oh, now, she may have thrown Roderick in the paddock last time, but my God, we'll have her saddled and bridled and the bit between her teeth by Easter. But this affair needs conducting with delicacy and taste. Yes. <laughs> so if he has a doxy, tell him to keep it quiet. Now, to tell the truth, he, he seems to prefer roistering and swaggering with the lads these days. Ah, well, these may be his last days of freedom. Where is he? Um, he's in the stable, sir. I believe his horse may have cast a shoe. Landlord, send a boy for Master Roderick. Now send, but he won't come. He's wrestling in the stables with the young Dickon. Uh -huh. The best of three, four. What? Now, I warned you about this, Grunge. I won't have him carousing with that young wistful. He's a pleasing youth, sir. He may be a pleasing youth, Grunge, but he enjoys low life and bad company. And he's also a very close friend of Captain Starlight over there, who rides the Great North Road, robbing and plundering. They both end up on the gallows, you mark my words. I don't know what Roderick sees in him. They have nothing in common. Well, young Dickon has his good points. He's no whoremonger. Oh, that he's not. And he keeps himself clean. Indeed. He's most fastidious in his habits. But he never bites his nails. Nor does he spit. I've never heard him swear. Well, I've heard him swear. Well, not really naughty words, are you? Nothing of a sexual nature. He <laughs> never tells a dirty jest. You see, what did I tell you? They have nothing in common. <laughs> I say you cheated, Roddy. What? I had you in a bear hug, Dicker. Oh, you nigh crushed the breath out of me. Why, well, I didn't hurt you, did I? You are all right. It would take more than you to hurt me, you popping jay. Ooh, what, a young dog? Then I must give you your revenge. I'll take it now. <laughs> I'll get you for that. <laughs> Roderick, a word. <laughs> I'll be over there with Starlight. I don't think your father approves of me. A fig for what he approves, Dicker. <laughs> yes, father. Great news, Roderick. Arabella is coming to the ball. Our plan has succeeded. Good. You don't seem very excited. Well, of course I am, but I can't stay now. I've invited Dickon back to the hall for cards and a glass of claret. Invited him back to the hall? Never. He'll not enter. I've told you to keep away from that feckless youth. He's my best friend, Father. He's a bad lot. Have a care, Father. I will not have Dickon slandered. Have a care? Do you know to whom you speak, you rogue? <laughs> and look at him now. He's a bosom friend of Captain Starlight, who rides the Great North Road robbing and plundering. And, and, uh, well, <laughs> and there's something else. Something else? What? I don't know, but there's something else. Something that doesn't ring true. I don't know what you mean. He's the truest companion a fellow ever had. Roderick, he is a young rascal, and you are a gentleman, and a gentleman is judged by the company he keeps. Ah, you mean birds of a feather, I, Father. Precisely. You mean if I'm seen drinking with someone shifty, shady and degenerate, I shall be judged accordingly? Of course. Then I'll leave you, Father. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did you hear that, Grant? That's the first time he's disobeyed me. I know, sir. That young rogue has turned father against son. Have you, um... Uh, <laughs> have you, uh... Have you noticed anything about young Dickens, sir? Eh? What, Grant? Something I've observed. The, the smallness of the hands, the smoothness of the skin. <laughs> oh, yes, now you mentioned it. And, and, and his dainty way of speaking, the, the voice so soft and well modulated. Yes. And his walk, it has a, it has a delicacy that you don't usually associate with the stable. Yes. <laughs> Grunch, you're not thinking what I'm thinking. Yes. He's of noble birth, all right. <laughs> Oh, 
Roddy. I'll just saddle the mare and I'll be with you. Ah, no, there's no hurry, Dickon. Change of plans. We can't go to the hall today. It's your father, ain't it? He hates me. No. Well, yes. <laughs> it's nothing personal. He hates everyone. Come on, let's go out and tip over a pie store. I'm not, I'm not in the vein. We can't go to the house, Dickon. Oh, it seems I'm good enough for the stables, but not for your fine house and fine friends. We haven't got any fine friends. <laughs> Even the beggars won't speak to us. And what about Arabella Ascombe? The mincing jade. Oh, mercy, what a week. We are alone and you in your shirt sleeves. <laughs> I am transported. If you touch me, I shall die. I know I shall. <laughs> Dickon, you do that so damned well. <laughs> I wish you'd teach me. How do you do it? Oh, never mind. Isn't Arabella Ascombe rich? Yes. Father wants me to marry her. A lusty rogue like you marry that pampered, simpering ninny. <laughs> You'd frighten her out of her stays. Dickon, I believe you're jealous. No, I'm not. She's just a girl, Dickon. But we're pals. We, we shoot, we ride and wrestle, we roister and we swagger. Ah, I'd sooner be with you, Dickon, than anyone. But women are only good for one thing. Oh? What's that? <laughs> no. Roderick! No, Arabella! <laughs> what are you doing in the stables with that ragamuffin? And you in your shirt sleeves? I'll get my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't funny, Roderick. You must be more discerning in your company. Father would not approve of that young rascal. <laughs> you may leave us, boy. No, ma'am. I would not leave you alone with him, not in the stables, for he is a vulgar brute and would roll you in the hay as soon as look at you. What? <laughs> that boy deserves a whipping. I shall wait for you in the carriage, Roderick. <laughs> now you've done it. Look, I'll have a word with Father, try and get you an invitation to the ball. You'd like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Roddy. I'll be there. One way or another. <laughs> you can come out now, Starlight. I don't like this. It's not for you to like or dislike. I wish to gain entrance to the hall. There's nothing to steal from Haggard Hall. We hide things in places like that. <laughs> True, but on the night of the ball, there'll be rich pickings. We should stick to coaches, stand and deliver. That's our game. You seem to forget. Coaches are in the habit of moving. The last time you said stand and deliver, they ran you down. <laughs> and we were half an hour trying to dig you out of the mud. Even so, I don't like you mixing business with pleasure, lady. Don't call me that. If you play me false, you jade. Don't threaten me, Starlight. I'll do more than threaten. <laughs> More cordial, sir. No, sir. We only came here to inquire about your plans for the ball. My daughter and I seldom attend such functions, and we hope that it will be conducted with modesty and good taste. Oh, have no fear, sir. There will be nothing vulgar. Delicacy will be our watchword. Yes, only I understand some of your routes have got out of hand in the past. Out of hand? How so? I heard that a cat was thrown through a window and the guests were so drunk they could barely stand. No. <laughs> you see how things get exaggerated. It was a guest who was thrown out the window and the cat could barely stand. And on another occasion, you rode your horse through the lady's bedroom. You well, call that good taste? The horse was blinkered, sir. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Do you have anything to add, Arabella? Yes. Will there be dusting? Dusting? <laughs> see? I can write my name in the dust. Yes. Isn't education a wonderful thing? <laughs> and will you also remove the chamber pot, sir? Chamber pot? Beneath the table. Oh, good heavens, how did that get there? Grunch! Sir! There's a chamber pot under the table. Yes, don't you remember, sir? It was to avoid the walk down the garden. <laughs> Shut up, Grunch, and get 
have this place dusted before you get your head thrust into that aforesaid receptacle. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, was there anything else? <laughs> was there anything else, sir, before you leave? Yes. Dickham, Roderick's bosom friend. Will he be invited? Certainly not. He's a scandal upon the town. The limb of Satan, I believe. One more. I feel that Roderick is too familiar with that young rascal. He prefers to go riding with him than join us here. I, know, I don't know what Roderick sees in him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a word with him. One more thing, Haggard. I've had a note from a distant relative recently returned to the area after many years' absence. She wishes to be invited. Well, certainly. Her name, sir. Lady Milton. Oh, the wicked Lady Milton? She is no longer known by that name, sir. She has put aside her wanton ways under the bishop's instruction, and she now leads a life of sobriety. <laughs> that is why there must be real reminders of her past life. Have no fear, sir. This affair is guaranteed to bore the pants off a Puritan. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Good day, sir, Miss Arabella. Oh. <laughs> mm. oh. Now, did you hear that, Grant? Now, Dickon must not be invited. Indeed not, sir. You know something, Grant. What is it? Only that um, young Dickon has certain proclivities. <laughs> proclivities? Certain inclinations. Uh, <clears throat> I, um... I believe him to be an hermaphrodite, sir. <laughs> no, he has no religion whatsoever. No, no, no. I mean, I saw him kissing Captain Starlight. What? Mm. I knew it. I knew it. He's a linen lifter. <laughs> a double dipper. And a close friend of my son. You must tell him, Grant. Look, Master Roderick has a violent and destructive temper, You sir. must, for the sake of his reputation. For uh, uh, about young Dick. Well, Roderick, one moment. Grant, there's something to say to you about Dickon and Starlight. <laughs> yes, Grant. I don't know how to say this. <laughs> Tell him about the proclivities. Well, I don't understand. There is a love that dare not speak its name, sir. <laughs> yes. That drinks at the well of loneliness. Oh, get on. <laughs> what is it, Grant? Dickon is... I find this difficult to say. <laughs> uh, may I? Mm. <laughs> no, you don't spell it like that. You spell it like <laughs> What? You're excited, aren't you, sir? Yes! <laughs> and to think, Grant, that any moment I shall be the company of Lady Milton, once the wickedest woman in all England. Take care, sir. She is the essence of evil and has practised unknown vices. Unknown vices? Really? I thought I knew them all. <laughs> what a pity she's reformed. What a pair we would have made. Even so, I'm in such a fever of anticipation, I can hardly hold my hand still. Then you need wait no longer, for see, she comes. Uh, uh, no, music, play on. Gaiety, laughter. <laughs> You'd think they'd never seen a wicked lady before. <laughs> lady Melton, allow me to introduce our host, Squire Haggard of Haggard Hall. Your servant, ma'am. Excuse me, have we not met before? I think not, sir. I'm sure I would have remembered. Indeed, even the enemies say, one scene never forgotten. I can understand that. What? <laughs> you must excuse my lateness, sir, but I was at my needle point and became quite absorbed. Oh, I see. Could I get you a glass of punch, ma'am? No. Strong waters give me a headache. Perhaps some refreshing cordial. I'll get it for you, my dear. Fine house, Haggard. Yes, indeed. Is there a private room where we can be alone? <laughs> Pardon? I've been longing to meet you, Haggard. I've been like Tinder all day, waiting for the spark. <laughs> I'm sorry, would you, would you repeat that? 
I understand you're a very wicked man. <laughs> well, fairly uh, wicked. Yes, I can see that. I'd heard of you, of course, but nothing I'd imagine could equal the evil I see on that face. Well, when one's practiced unknown vices, it's bound to leave its mark. Perhaps we could practice them together. <laughs> But they said you reformed. That was to secure my estate without dispute. No, I've always been attracted to low life and lewdness from a very early age. <laughs> there is a, oh, a private room. It must be on the ground floor with a rear entrance, oh. so I may leave discreetly. It is across the hall. Then I'll retire then. You may come to me. Make it soon, for I'm on fire. Cordial, <laughs> my lady. Very good. I'll see if I can find Lady Melton a book of improving sermons. Excuse me. <laughs> Are you bored, Roderick? No. What makes you say that? That's the fifth chicken leg you've consumed in as many minutes. I suppose you wish your friend Dickon was here. How dare you mention his name? It's your fault we shan't see him tonight. Who is that? Lady Melton. The wicked Lady Melton? Oh, not anymore. She is tedious in her devotions and dedicated to Needlepoint. But they say she's led a wild life for one so young. Indeed. Her confession took three days and two of the clergy had nervous breakdowns. <laughs> then she had a great deal to confess. They say she's discovered three vices missing since the Crusades and invented two more. I must meet her. Roderick! Your servant, ma'am. And who are you, sir? My name is Roderick Haggard. I thought we'd met before, but no. You're such a peerless beauty, I'd have remembered. You are too bold, sir. Were you not bold yourself once? Were you not known as the wicked lady? I have changed my ways, sir. Let me pass. No. Oh, Roddy, please. Roddy? What made you call me that? He calls me that. Who? Dickon. Funny. You could almost be related. You have his eyes. His chin. Even a little freckle over the brow. Oh, please, sir, I feel faint. a little mole just there. Ah! Ah! Quick, Lady Melton has fainted. Grand, carry Lady Melton to the room across the hall <laughs> where she may compose herself. Gently. <laughs> What? She's in a state of shock. What did you say to her? Nothing. Nothing? Must have been something pretty foul to shock the wicked lady. Shame on you, Roderick. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> let, me, let me close that French window. We, we don't want to be disturbed. Besides, we might catch a chill practicing unknown vices. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're dressing up. <laughs> oh, if only you told me. This is a pretense, Haggard. This barker's loaded. And if you value your life, you'll get your fat, greasy carcass into the closet. The closet at Pistol Point. Ecstasy. Oh, this is a deviation indeed. Get in. Get in. Oh, get in indeed. Get in. He's all ready? Yes. Hurry, I'm, I'm overcome with impatience. Who's that? It's Haggard. He's a complete fool. What happens next? This. Oh. <laughs> Everyone stay exactly where they are. They should be in a line. Everyone in a line. Then stay exactly where you are. <laughs> Women over here, men over there. No, don't segregate the men. They may conspire. Stay with your women folk, <laughs> but in a line and exactly where you are. <laughs> Enough! When my friends come amongst you, give them your watches, rings and jewels. And purses. And purses. And any other valuables. And any other valuables. <laughs> and if you don't come down handsome, these pistols are loaded 
Hmm. You're getting better at this, Starlight. Thank you. <laughs> I'm told that gallants like you would sooner steal a kiss from a lady than her jewels. Ow! Sooner kiss the rear end of a horse. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poor man. I'm, I'm one of you, for, forced by necessity into a life of servitude and shame. <laughs> I, I've often thought of taking to the road, actually. Um, I'm, I'm told you sometimes rob the rich and give to the poor. Um, you, couldn't, you couldn't spare me a few crowns, could you? So... Oh. Your purse! No! What? I said your purse! Never! I'd sooner give you a taste of cold steel. Oh! Quick, men! Let's get out of here! Quick, after them! <laughs> Ah, the rogue has gone. He came this way, I swear it. One moment. What's this? Uh, oh, uh, He's in the closet. Uh, so it's you, Haggard. What? That's the meaning of this masquerade. You invite us to your house and then rob us. No, no, I was attacked myself. I came here to meet, what, well, Lady Melton. Lady Melton? Oh. Oh. My lady, is this true? Was Haggard really here with you all this time? Oh, I'm sorry, I cannot say, for I swooned and fell into a deep sleep. What happened? We have been robbed. We found the squire hiding in the closet and a cloak and mask lying nearby. One moment. I'm certain my father's innocent. Ah. <laughs> well, almost certain. But how did that get there? You can tell that to the constable. One moment. May I speak, sir? No, you may not, Blanche. Let, Let him, him speak. speak. Oh. <laughs> you may speak, Blanche. Let us examine the situation. Oh. We find the squire hiding in the closet under suspicious circumstances. He claims he came here to meet Lady Melton. Possible. We all know him for a randy cove. <laughs> but why retire to the closet unless to avoid compromising the lady's virtue? Possible. Then that leaves us with Lady Melton, the only witness to this story who remembers nothing, has heard nothing, has seen nothing. You see... They it... say that seeing is believing. <laughs> Not so, gentlemen. Let us consider Lady Melton. The bird has fine feathers. And I was dazzled. Yes, you were. But there was something wrong, something familiar. The walk, perhaps, the gestures, the freckle above the brow. And I concluded, oh, sorry. I concluded that the person who stands before us is not Lady Melton. <gasps> what are you suggesting, Grant? That this person assume the identity of Lady Melton to gain entrance to the house. Oh, brilliant, Grant. Answer that, you rogue. That the person who stands before us is not Lady Melton, not even a woman, but young Dickon, stable boy and henchman to Captain Starlight. Right. Now let me reveal you for the scoundrel you are. Dickon, the stable boy. <gasps> 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 Thank you. 